it's corruption because it's human nature is what we're up against. And, and, and you know, the, the powers of darkness, you know, that that's sin. Like, that's what we're ultimately up against. And so, you know, that doesn't mean that everyone, you know, every legislature and senator in, 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 in the state is a bad person. But what it does mean is when you have unchecked power, um, that's not good. It doesn't matter if they're Republicans or they're Democrats. And so absolutely not. We don't, I mean, we don't we don't have a Democrat Party holding the Republican Party accountable in the state of Alabama. We don't have a media holding. Not, well, we do now, but we, <laughs> we didn't um, and haven't had a media outlet to hold them accountable. So they've been completely unchecked. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. As always, remember to like and subscribe because that helps us fight off the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go to a guest. I was actually talking to him just a second ago. I'm very surprised we've never had this particular individual on my show. His name's Brian Dawson, and uh, he just recently launched a brand new news site, 1819 News, a news specifically for the state of Alabama. Welcome on to the program, Brian. Thanks for having me, Caleb. Well, I'm really excited to get to talk to you because you and I have been friends for a long time, but I was really just kind of stunned. We were talking off the air just a few minutes ago. It was like, I can't believe I've never had you on my show. <laughs> so uh, welcome on to the your maiden voyage. Well, thank you. Uh, it's exciting. Well, I wanted to talk, and, and we'll just dive right into this. Uh, 1819 News is a brand new site. It launched, what, two, three days ago, something like that? Yeah, we launched it on Monday. It actually went live at about like 1 15 p.m. Well, on Monday. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. What what was the idea behind 1819 News? Why is it that you felt that this was something that the state of Alabama needed when we already have several news sources? So just kind of give me the uh, the inspiration for putting this organization together. Sure. Um, and trying to figure out how far back to go into the whole origin story of it. I think uh, the simplest way of describing it is that any business that starts isn't the impetus behind a business starting is that there's an underserved clientele. Um, there's there's sure. uh, there's a problem uh, that needs solving, and so we believe that uh, the people of Alabama are underserved by their news and media outlets. And so, uh, I think that comes in a couple of different forms. Uh, I think the 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 first and most noticeable way that I think that people you know that I talk to have picked up on is um, the uh, AL dot com. Um, mm-hmm shaming of your values and so it's just this this and it's the you know the, the media agent or the media outlet of record in the state the alabama media group that now owns the birmingham news the mobile press register mm-hmm. uh the big paper in huntsville they now own all of that and it's um uh, well i'll get into to that in a second but um you you can see just a steady stream of content coming out from them that is um you know uh, you you no good dirty rednecks clean you know you bitter clingers clinging your guns and your bibles you know how dare you vote for trump you should be ashamed of yourselves and as you really dig into the alabama media group and their funding they're funded by pro publica and pro publica is a george soros funded mm-hmm. uh organization and so why on earth would there be an outlet that's just posted up in an, a a a deep red state that just slams everyone in that state for what they believe and if you think about it, it's like well yeah someone's funding that thing to be uh basically like a, a steady drop to cause like a water dropping uh, of erosion on our values that they just day in day out tell us how stupid we are and how we should be ashamed of what we believe in i think they just came out with an article yesterday or the day before that you know, we're the fourth unhappiest state or the fourth saddest state or something like that um, and their their metrics for what they were measuring for why we were the fourth saddest state were ridiculous. But either way, mm-hmm. I mean, that just captures sure. exactly what the problem is, is like these people hate Alabama. They hate Alabamians. Um, and that's our news, uh, you know, the news outlet of, of, of record in the state. And so um, that that is one problem. Uh, the other problem is the the media outlets that are the, supposed to be not that um, are. Um, they're not doing, uh, they're, they're not asking tough questions. And so I would say, instead of um, digging in and asking tough questions, and, and I always say this, historically, the, the press has always promoted healthy skepticism of government. It's their job is to hold the government and, 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 and corporations and people with power. Uh, it's supposed to keep them in check, and, and, it's, and it serves the people. And right now, they're not doing that. And so... Uh, I would say that, you know, rather than, you know, asking Governor Ivey tough questions, they're trying to cozy up to her to get access 
Um, and there's probably a whole lot of other things that are going on too, but um, not to jump into that, it, the simplest way of saying it is um, the people of Alabama are being underserved because the media outlets aren't promoting healthy skepticism in the government. They follow whatever shiny red object the, the, the government's communications people put out a press release talking about how great the governor is or <clears throat> when it's not just the governor, just whoever, and they just follow it and say, oh yeah, the governor is great or this is that. And there's, there's no <clears throat> digging in and asking questions again. And, and because of that, um, the people of Alabama uh, are not being served well. And so you can look at the, the last legislative session uh, and, and things like that. And um, it, how far do I want to go into that? Yeah, There's well, so, much, so much meat on that bone and we can probably save that for later. But at the end of the day, why, why did we start it? There's two problems. Um, one is, is the major media outlet is telling us we should be ashamed of what we believe. The other media outlets aren't asking tough questions. We're going to solve both of those problems by um, having real journalists that are doing real uh, reporting uh, and digging and, and finding answers for the people of Alabama. And we're also going to create content that celebrates what's good, true and beautiful about the state. Well, I, I mean, I, I agree with, an, you know, pretty much all of that. And uh, I just kind of want to get inside your head as far as where this question goes. I think there are two different schools of thought here when it comes to new media. There's the one that takes the um, everybody's biased, everyone has bias. And so let's just steer into that skid and just openly admit that, you know, Daily Wire, the Blaze are conservative and you have uh, Slate and Mother Jones that just openly admit that they're liberal and, and that that's the better route to go. It sounds like, and I just want to get your reaction to this because I know you're personally conservative. But are you guys going to take more of the stance of we're going to do more objective journalism and, and try to be an actual journalistic organization instead of giving news from a, a certain bend or a certain ideological stance? Absolutely. And so um, there is a thing, and I've been in news media for the last seven years, and there's a saying that if you're not left, you're right. And, and what that means is, is if you're not saying the same things in all, as all these radical left media outlets and that are shaping the narrative, if you're not saying what they're saying, you must be Alex Jones, right? And so the Epic Times, I think, took those shots. I think they do a lot of really, really good mm -hmm. um, straight reporting, and they're considered radically conservative, and they're not really that radically conservative. They, they, they do journalism. And so by not being left, you're going to be considered right, if that makes sense. But we have... No, um, I mean, it makes sense. When you have such a large majority in an industry that thinks one way, of course, if you don't do that, regardless of whether you have an ideological bend or not, you're going to be perceived as an outlier. So yeah, I think that stands to reason. Yeah. And within our media organization, we're going to have multiple departments. Our news department is dedicated to shooting straight down the middle. If... Um, you guys are not familiar with who Ray Mellick is. Ray Mellick was uh, at the Birmingham Post Herald. Uh, as a sports journalist, um, one of the best in the business, and and he is a a true journalist to the core. He went on from the Birmingham Post Herald to work at the Birmingham News. Uh, when the Birmingham News started to move in the direction that it currently is now, um, he left uh, and went into doing comms work for big corporations and stuff like that. And then he went on to uh, be the district director for Gary Palmer uh, in uh, in his congressional district, and so. Um, we actually went to him and, and shared the idea and said, hey, do you know anybody that, you know, might want to oversee this? Just thinking that he might, you know, there's no way Ray's going to go want to come work for us. I mean, we have a great vision and, and we have great resources, but, you know, Ray's older and, and he's established and he's basically riding off into the sunset where he was. And he's like, uh, actually, I think I might be, I, I think I'd be interested in, in, in being that person for you. And so mm -hmm. he's our editor in chief and he's making sure that the news is the news. Um, there is no political spinning. The The news comes straight down the middle. If we have a reporter, and, and what, what can happen when you have an editorial board that's strong is you don't have to worry about the political leanings of uh, your reporters. If you have a reporter that's maybe center left, that's going to be tightened up in the editing process to make sure that there's no po politics showing in the reporting. Uh, if you've got a guy that leans a little bit more right, that's going to be tightened up uh, having an editorial board. Nothing gets posted to our website by reporters. It all has to go through an editor, and those editors um, are being told um, and, and by, by Ray uh, and, and, and supported by me that um, the news has to be the news. We can't be um, using adjectives that skew us one way or the other. Now, that being said, our editorial page, our opinions uh, and, and our columns and our features and things like that, 
um, that's going to be a little bit more center right, and and we because we want it to reflect Alabama, and so our branding statement is honest news, the voice of Alabama values, and so our editorial page is going to reflect what we think Alabama values are: is um, a belief in God, believing the Bible, mm -hmm. hard work, perseverance, owning land, family. Um, I mean, all these things that make Alabama what it is, and it goes on competition and all these other things that that reflect who we are. Um, you know, fall kind of on one side of the spectrum, but that doesn't mean we're not going to give voice to someone who disagrees. We actually want to promote healthy conversations on our editorial page. And then we're going to be, we're going to have a full blown audio video production unit that's dedicated to, to uh, creating content. And that's where we're really going to lean into celebrating what's good about the state rather than all of the, the shaming, we, you know, there's incredible stories out there. There's, um, you know, from our heroes, everyone from, you know, Bear Bryant to Helen Keller, uh, our entrepreneurs, our businesses, um, the things that we have going on in Huntsville that are incredible, that's making international news. We have the Port and Mobile. Birmingham's an absolute economic powerhouse. And you have us in Montgomery, which is the capital. So there's stuff going on all over the place. And, and, and it's really, really good. And it's just those stories aren't being told. So we want to fix that. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. And I find myself in a, a weird position, too, as a political commentator who obviously has a bias. I'm very open about that. I appreciate the fact that you guys want to be the the guys that aren't that, that actually do want to just tell the news, tell it straight, just deliver the facts. Of course, you know, I, I like to think most of my stuff is based on facts as well. But the point is, I actually do have an opinion. I, I want to espouse that. And, and the fact that you are going to offer sort of both of that, you're going to have the hard journalism and draw a very distinct line between that and the opinion stuff. Because, you know, I'm, I'm reading... I read a lot of media specifically out of the state of Alabama all the time. And to, to their credit, occasionally they will, you know, post something that's just openly overtly political and say that this is an opinion column, but they've blurred the line between journalism and opinion to where you really like whether the labels on it or not, you know, that you're getting something directly from the left with a lot of our, uh, uh, with a lot of our media. And then the other one kind of has the same problem that you were just talking about. If the goal of an interview is to get to a second interview, then that interview is not going to be any good. And, and I'm, you know, I, I would hate the fact that I, I have a hard time getting KIV on the show, but I, you know, I think part of that is because she knows it would be a tough interview. Um, and so, I, you know, I appreciate the, uh, the sort of direction that you're taking from that. Um, but if you're going to be doing the audio and video, I guess that's what I really want to latch on to uh, just because it's, it's something that interests me as well. Um, are you guys going to be doing content kind of like this, like a talk show with interviews and that kind of thing? Are you guys going to be leaning more towards like creative media, you know, short films, that sort of thing? Yeah. So I would say, you know, eventually both. And so eventually we'll have an app and we'll be doing kind of the style of show that you're talking about or maybe something like you would see on blaze tv with steve dace and so they're in a, an audio production studio that has a fancy background and so it looks like a radio show on tv right and so we'll, we'll right. eventually get into those things but um the the crux of our audio video production is going to be telling stories and so uh caleb you know my background working for lee habib and right. our american stories uh, it's the fastest growing radio show in the country and it's a storytelling radio show and they 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 celebrate the things that are beautiful about our country uh our country's under attack our country's you know history and reputation we've we've allowed the left to tell our story and so um there's a great line let's see if i don't butcher it uh, that he wrote in the federalist back in 2018 it says if we continue to let the left tell the story of america to americans that's not just gross negligence it's cultural suicide and so what's meant by that is if we continue to let the left tell our story, mm -hmm. we can't be surprised when it's not the right, when it's not true and it's not the right story. Well, and go ahead. No, I was going to say, we have to keep in mind, even though I love this medium, I love talk radio. I think I have a fantastic audience. And I mean, you, you know, a lot of the people in my audience as well, uh, great people, but you know, we have to be realistic about the fact that the people that are involved enough to take time to listen to an overtly political podcast or radio show or TV show like we're, we're doing now, that's like maybe 5% of the state and that's being generous. Yeah. And so if we actually do want to make a difference, we have to be able to, you know, venture into a venue that appeals to a broader audience, I guess uh, is the best yeah. way to say it. Absolutely. And, and, um, that, and that, that's it. And, and the left has Hollywood and NPR. And so, 
you know, they have the, and, mm -hmm. and they're not preaching to the choir. I think they have Rachel Maddow as like their only, you know, political, you know, like, so we, we had Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, Michael Savage. I mean, you just go on down the line. Sure. Um, and, and all we do with that medium, I always joke and say it's angry conservatives talking to other angry conservatives about how angry and conservative they are. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's what There's we do. There's some truth to that. Yeah. And that's what we do with this medium. And it's literally all we do is we don't preach to the choir. We yell at them. Um, we yell at the choir. And so um, why is it that we don't spend more time just trying to create content that celebrates what's good rather than us constantly talking about what's bad about the left? Why don't we tell them what's good about not just not, not what's good about the right? Why don't we tell them what's good about their country? Mm -hmm. Why don't we tell them what's good about their state um, and, and leave all the left, right, political, you know, um, all those issues and just, um, you know, and, and think about like, the, the, the imitative power of storytelling too. And you think sure. about media and story as cult, cultural architecture and you, and you watch Braveheart and you hear that speech and you're just moved, you know, by that speech and you see that he died uh, in order to, to, to give freedom to his people. And that makes you want to, you know, have those same attributes and those same um, things and, and it's uh, courage and leadership and all these things. And so you want to imitate that. I think another, uh, a good story that talks about the imitative power um, have you seen the movie, the blind side? Uh, yeah, I have yeah. seen it. And you know, what's it's very funny good. Is, <laughs> I've never asked anyone if they saw the blind side and they're like, no, that's i uh, I've never <laughs> seen it. So of course everyone's seen the blind side. Well, you so, do live in a football state. So that, that probably is, is, is a true. contributing this factor. This is true. And when we played Ole Miss, so, um, but you know, the blind side is, it's a, it's a story. It was originally written in a book and then it was turned into a movie about, um, a family who, uh, adopts, um, uh, a poor black kid and gives him love and direction and, and helps him along his way. And he ends up going to Ole Miss to play football. He's drafted, I think in 2009, um, to, to go and, and play for uh, the Ravens. I think he even won a Super Bowl. He was a first round draft pick. So on and on and on. It's just this incredible, beautiful story. And someone I know that's close to the Tui family, who's the ones that adopted Michael Orr, mm -hmm. um, said that uh, Leanne Tui sent out a Christmas card to the people that helped in the project and said that they've had thousands of people um, write, her an email or a letter or something saying, Hey, because we watched this movie or because we read this book, we decided to adopt. And to me, that's that imitative power of storytelling. When you tell stories about things that are good, people will imitate those things that are good. And so we want to paint a picture of the good life and, and do that in an excellent way. And we think that that will help uh, move the culture in a healthy uh, direction. Well, I just think it's common sense. You know that I'm also a minister as well. And I mean, how did God choose to reveal himself to us through Story. narrative? Yep. Like, I mean, that's just, I, are there laws in the Bible? Sure. That, that just plain spell out exactly what you should do and what you shouldn't do. But the revelation itself came through narrative. And yeah. uh, Jordan Peterson actually talks about that quite a bit about how important it is that that people understand their world through drama and acting out and narrative and that's how we really develop a sense of morality and so no i, I think exactly what you're talking about is, is something that would be extremely helpful uh, in the state of alabama and nationally um in alabama though i, I think that sometimes we get lulled into a, a false sense of of safety and security because you talk to the average alabamian and there's just a sense of all the, the crazy, especially socially liberal things that are going on in other states. Well, that could never happen here because we, we live in Alabama. Mm. And I, I think that and I would hope that an honest look, which is what you guys seem to want to be uh, wanting to present to them, just an honest look at the status of things would reveal very quickly. First of all, Alabama is not nearly as conservative as they think they are. It might be socially conservative in a lot of ways, but our policies don't often reflect that. Uh, and more moreover. Um, you know, with the way that things are going on in the federal government, there's a whole lot of people that are trying to impose things regardless of, of what the state is. And there's a lot of people in the state that because there's a price tag attached to it are more than willing to accept if it means that they bring home some bacon for the state of Alabama. And so um, I think, you know, how do you combat that, that sense of security that a lot of Alabamians have? Oh, we're in a conservative state. It'll all be fine. We don't have to worry about that kind of thing. There's really no need for us to be villain, uh, vigilant on that. Yeah, so I think I think the problem is is the twenty four hour national news cycle, and so everyone thinks that, and where that oh we're not California attitude comes from is because we were steadily watching Fox News and we're locked in. And I mean, you walk into any Republican's house for the most part, and I wouldn't even say Republican, 
majority of Alabamians that I know, when I walk in their house, Fox News is playing in the background. They might not even be actively watching it. It's just on. You can drive down the road and look into people's houses and you see Sean Hannity <laughs> talking, right? It's just, it's what it is. And so we're pulled into this national news cycle. And keep in mind, a 24-hour news cycle takes a lot to fill. And so all oh, yeah. of a sudden things that aren't even news start becoming news and things like that. And so we get hooked into it and we get hooked into it intentionally because they want ratings and we get sucked into this national drama and we forget that we have terrible things going on in our state at the legislative level in the, you know, um, and in the policy uh, making level. And so they're pulled into that national thing and they think, you know, on the national stage, people in Alabama are like, okay, well, Democrats are the problem. Um, and so they check up for like the split second that they check up to, to take their eyes off of national news and politics. And they look at Alabama and it's Republicans all the way on down the line. And they're like, all right, we're good to go. Democrats mm -hmm. are the problem. Let's go to this. And they don't realize that in, in, you know, in the state of Alabama, the, all the problems are being caused right now are be, we have a Republican supermajority and, 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 and we're getting legislation that would make a New York Democrat blush, right? It's crazy. And so, um, and no one's paying attention. So I think the way that we solve that problem to kind of get that uh, apathetic, view towards you know oh we'll never be that um is that you get you you show the people of alabama how they're being uh played is maybe that's the right word how they're 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 not being served um by the the, the people that they're electing to send to montgomery to represent Absolutely. them um and you do it in such a way to where they get engaged and i think the cultural climate right now uh it, it's it's perfect timing uh right now that people have the kind of like a sleeping giant has been awakened between COVID and all the vaccine stuff and the election stuff and everything else. People are really waking up and saying, Hey, we, we can't sit on the sidelines anymore. We're going to get, we need to get involved. And so we want to provide them with the information they need so that they can engage in their civic duties. Well, you know, it's an interesting problem because especially people that are small government minded like you and me and um, you know, the way the founders I believe intended it, was for the average citizen to not really need to pay attention to stuff like this. I mean, our whole system is geared towards the average person not really having to worry about politics all that often. And yet it was those same founders that believed that once the public became ill-informed that you would see the end of the republic. And so it's an interesting sort of dichotomy is that uh, our goal is really to get to a point to where the average person doesn't really need to think about politics on a daily basis or, or, or really not, you know, at all until an election. But at the same time, we do want to make people aware of things because uh, that is how our system was originally designed, but it's not functioning the way it was originally designed for sure. Yeah, I think um, too, and I think there's a difference between being aware and being an activist. And it was actually your dad that brought this to my attention. We were at a, one of Becky's um, things at Bethel for Eagle Forum. And I was talking to him, he says, look, you know, um, I, I work, you know, I work hard and I don't have time to be a political activist to pay attention to all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I need someone to just tell me what's going on in a quick way. And interestingly enough, it was him having that conversation with me that started a, a feature we have called the Daily Detail. Um, that's going to be a daily seven to 12 minutes. It's going to be delivered as a podcast. It's not really a traditional podcast, but that'll be how we deliver it. Sure. And it's just a daily seven to 12 minute newscast that tells you everything that you need to know that's going on in Alabama. And then it'll segue to everything that's going on nationally that's going to affect you as an Alabamian. So you, if you can take 10 minutes every day to listen to that on your on your way to work, you will stay informed. And so we want people to be aware. The people that are able to get active, we need them to get active. But we need everyone to be aware of what's going on. And that's the whole thing. It's like if people, the people of Alabama, if they knew what was going on, they would do the right thing. And it's but they don't know, I think, is the problem. And so... Being able to get them to pay attention, and once they see what's going on, I think that they'll they'll respond accordingly. Yeah, no, I, I I couldn't agree more. I mean, Alabama, we are naturally like inherently conservative on the the citizen level, and I think that if they just had any awareness of what was going on, uh, you would see a lot of changes probably pretty quickly. Uh, a great example of this is I. Um, had a conversation with somebody that's not particularly politically savvy. And, and that's part of the reason that I was interested in, in having this conversation. Uh, and they were talking about Governor Ivey, for example, and saying, well, I, I just appreciate how conservative Governor Ivey is. And, and I'm not trying to pick on Governor Ivey. I'm just saying, it's like, I, I, as I've always said, because Governor Ivey is definitely not the worst governor in the country. You know, she, she's not Gavin Newsom. I'm not trying to make the case that she is. 
But I said, in the last primary, you voted for her. Yeah. I said, well, you know that she was the least conservative of all of the candidates that were running. And they said, well, what do you mean? I was like, well, she's never met a tax she didn't like. She's always in favor of new spending measures and bills. And uh, yes, she signed, for example, the, uh, the abortion ban, but has done absolutely nothing to enforce it. So that has been entirely symbolic from the get-go. Uh, and, you know, talked about the new gas tax, the way that she handled the thing in Mobile with the bridge, uh, talked about the Amazon tax, the retail tax. I mean, like, but just these people have no idea, absolutely no idea. none that that ever happens. Uh, all they know is that she says some nasty things about Joe Biden every once in a while, and then they don't see her again for two months, and they think, oh, she must be pretty conservative. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm just using her as an example because there's a lot of state legislators that are in exactly the same boat. Yeah. And I, I think, too, um, the standard is different for her because she's the governor of Alabama, right? Mm -hmm. She's not, she's not the governor of Vermont. She's not the government of Delaware or the governor of Delaware. She's not, you know, or even some other kind of milk toast, squishy state. Like we are. The, can, the most conservative state culturally in the nation. Like I Absolutely. definitely put us up against Texas. We are the most conservative. And so you, 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 in, you see Christy Nome, you see, and again, people have their differences about her, but if you really just boil it down and look at what she's done, it's really incredible. Uh, you see Gavin, or not Gavin, oh man, uh, Ron DeSantis yeah. um, and what he's doing. And you're like, wow, that's what leadership looks like. Look at what they're doing. And, he's and that doing dude's that in, in a Florida. swing state. Yeah, he, he's doing that in Florida. And so one of the things that's crazy is one of the things I have learned working in the media space is that uh, in the politics space is, and, it's, and it doesn't apply here, and it's so weird, is that politics is downstream from culture, right? It's the whole Breitbart thing. Politics right, is downstream Breitbart. from culture. Nothing happens in politics or public policy until it first takes place in the culture. No matter what people think about it, Obergefell doesn't happen without will and grace, right? right. It doesn't. And so... They use media to all of a sudden take something that's taboo and then make it normal. And then all of a sudden it finds its way into legislation and the entire culture has changed. And that's how it usually goes. Well, here in Alabama, it's not. We have an incredible culture mm -hmm. and our legislation stinks and it does not reflect <laughs> it. And it's, it's so it's like, um, it is, it's absolutely bizarre. And what that means is we just have a, a disengaged populace and that's the way they want it. They want to mm -hmm. lull us and rock us to sleep about state level issues and say, look at California. Look at Gavin Newsom. Look at that crazy lady in Michigan. Look at this. Look at that. Look everywhere but Montgomery. Well, and I think that really is they want it to be the standard. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're pushing for, because as long as their standard is, well, at least we're not those guys. And unfortunately, there's a lot of Alabama citizens that are perfectly content with that. Yeah. Uh, just, well, you know, we're not we're not California, or, you know, even a less blue state. We're not, you know, like you were talking about some of the New England states, your Delaware's, your Maine's, that kind of thing. Um. But, you know, it would be kind of like if you joined a church and said, well, at least we're not Satan worshipers. Yeah. Well, that's not a good reason to join a church. Yeah. We're the, we should be the standard bearers of, of conservatism and what a super a Republican supermajority, you know, ran state. We should be the standard bearer. People should be looking at Alabama and be like, man, if we could get to where Alabama is, we'd be doing something. Instead, we're dragging behind. And another thing I think, too, and well, I don't even know if I want to get all the way into that, but. Um, the folks at the Alabama Policy Institute put together a study, and I wish I could cite it off the top of my head or whatever, and, sure. and if I need to, I can go find it. But it was basically based off of the natural resources that this state has, mm -hmm. where should we be competing at in these different areas? And so with the timber industry that we have, with the Port Mobile, with um, the aeronautical stuff we're going on in Huntsville, Birmingham's an absolute economic powerhouse. We have all this stuff. They said that if, if, if government would just get out of the way and there wasn't all these res restrictive regulations and, you know, monopolies and, and all this, like all the stuff that goes on in Alabama and corruption and everything else, if that was moved out of the way, we would be competing at like 25th or 26th in every category. Instead, we're battling for 49th and 50th. And that's because of, I, I would argue, the style of government that we have. Um, and so... Well, you, you compare us to other states that are just killing it in uh, economically. And, you know, in some pockets of Alabama, economically, we're doing very well. Huntsville is a great example of that. Uh, but if you look at it overall, you look at what the difference is between us and, for example, Texas and Florida. What is one big, big thing that we have that they don't? Income tax. 
how does our state continue to have an income tax or and a grocery tax? I was going to say, or we need to get rid of some sales tax because what we're doing now is just taxing the same income twice. And, and, and again, not to, to, to keep plugging that, but Justin Bogey at the Policy Institute just came out with a um, a huge report on basically the, the budget and, and the money and the flow of government. Alabama has never had a larger budget surplus than they did last year. They have more money than they've ever had in the history of the state. And they didn't have a sales tax holiday. They didn't eliminate the grocery tax. They didn't, you know, lower or reduce or get rid of the, the state income tax. They didn't do anything with it. Like, and then and instead they, they want more, more, more gas tax, more, more, more. Right. So mm -hmm. um, it's crazy. Well, you know, we were actually very fortunate in a lot of ways when it came to the COVID thing, because if you look at our economic numbers compared to most states, and I'm, I'm talking about some of the very large states, we actually had significantly less impact from the pandemic than most states. And I think that is because culturally, regardless of what was mandated from the top or what the, the law was, I use that, you know, sparingly because a mandate is not a law and you actually don't have to adhere to it regardless of what people tell you to. Uh, but, you know, those things being in place, most people just kind of ignored it. And that's kind of reflective of the thing that we're just talking about right there. It makes no sense that our laws do not reflect the the will of our people. Um, the the people of Alabama and the way that their legislatures and and their elected officials think is just very much out of step with one another, and it's just strange that we have that problem. Um, but you know, what do you think as far as with uh, with eighteen nineteen news? Um, what do you think that shift in media w will do for that when it comes to just getting, you know, I'm, I'm talking more on the news level, not necessarily the opinion, which is what I do. Um, what, what do you think that that does? Uh, do you think that that will actually make an alteration in voting practices or do you think it's going to be more of the same? I think, um, again, and, and so in our mission statement that we've come out with, we're trying to ignite a civic and cultural revival in the state of Alabama. And you can't do that if you don't have the truth. And so the news, you know, that we have the superior product, we have the truth. Our news is going to be honest. We're going to tell people what's going on. Um, and then obviously with our opinion stuff and the, the, the other content that we're going to be creating, it's going to be encouraging people to get involved and to teach them how things work in, at the, you know, um, at the state level as far as politics, who their senator is, who their congressman is, how to get in touch with them. Um, you know, all of those type of things, but it just at the pure news level, um, I think giving the people of Alabama the information that they need and, and, and Ray, and I'm probably going to butcher his saying, um, but it's, you know, his philosophy is, is shine the light and then let people figure out where they want to go. And so by that's us, what journalism is supposed to be yes. like, you just hear the facts, you make your own decisions. Yeah. And I really do. If, if people understood how the decisions that were being made in Montgomery affected their pocketbook, affected their families. Mm -hmm. And they really just saw it in one big clear picture, you know, oh my gosh, you know, and, and one of the ways I equated it is they're sitting there kind of, I wouldn't say, I don't know, happy or, you know, not, not knowing what's going on. And so they're just kind of in this, this lulled state. And I, and like, imagine if you had a house and a, and a piece of property and you were down river from someone, uh, that had a house and property upriver, mm -hmm. and they were basically cutting off the water, and you didn't, you know, doing something that was affecting your land, but you didn't know about it. And then all of a sudden, someone came and told you and said, hey, you know, Bubba up the way is doing such and such to your water, and you're downstream from him. You know, you didn't know anything about it, and you, you couldn't have cared less 20 minutes ago. But now all of a sudden that you know that this is happening, you're fired up and you're mad because you see what someone, some, someone is doing something that affects you adversely and you didn't know about it and then you were made aware. And so we want to make the people of Alabama aware of the things that are going on in the state. Well, um, you, you know, it's an interesting combination that you've been talking about. And it's one that I try to walk myself, even though I'm, I'm not a hard news guy. Uh, it seems it's so interesting to me that, uh, you know, you take the stance of there are some real problems here. Uh, there are real issues that really do affect families and people in the state of Alabama that they need to know about, that they need to be aware of. And if they did, they would make some changes. However, we still come at it from the perspective of Alabama is a great place to live. We don't think that the people here are broken or that the state is like wildly out of step with where it should be. 
Um, and so it's an interesting dichotomy that, it, it, you know, I kind of find myself a little bit torn because I hold both of those beliefs as well. I think Alabama is the, the best state in the country. I, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. And at the same time, I'm very much aware of and, and spend a, a significant amount of my time a day uh, pointing out that there are problems here and things that need to be resolved. And so uh, how do you walk that line with a news organization like this? I don't, I don't even I wouldn't even look at it as, as a line. I think. Um you know, weeds, if you have a garden that produces fruit and it's good and you love your garden, that doesn't mean you don't have to pull weeds, right? And yeah, so, good point. Um, I think that's all it is. And I think I think the people of Alabama have been lulled into a, a slumber to where that they haven't been pulling weeds that they needed to. Uh, and I think that that slumber was intentional. Um, and, you know, the people that are in Montgomery right now don't want the people of Alabama to know what's going on. Uh, and they use the national, you know, news cycle as a way to distract. And so sure. I think once people again I, and i've said this you know three different ways but it really is i think once people are aware of what's going on um especially in the current climate right now i mean look at what's going on at um some of these concerned doctors things i don't know if you went to the birmingham one or if you're going to go to the one that's going to be here in montgomery i was actually out of the country for that one even though i was invited yeah. but uh, yeah. i did have dr mcwortley on my show to talk about it uh, ryan uh, dr mccorder yeah he's yeah. gosh he's fantastic and so um you know, I think the, the the one that they had in Birmingham, they sold 500 tickets and over a thousand people showed up. It was standing room only. It's absolutely incredible. So that's that shows you kind of what the climate is. And, and again, mm -hmm. going into everything with COVID shutdowns and, you know, was the election stolen and all this other stuff, people just know that something's wrong and it's reached a critical mass, if you will. It's reached a breaking point. And, and that mixed with uh, the timing of us coming in here and being able to shine a light on the corruption, mm -hmm. I think people are just dying to get involved and to be able to fix what's going on because they do love their state and, and, and they do know that it's the best place to live in the country. Well, and I think this is sort of the analogy that I gave. I like your analogy of the garden with the weeds. Um, you know, just because you're, this is the analogy I've used more often. Just because you're in love with someone, like if you're in a relationship, doesn't mean that there aren't flaws that need to be corrected. Like that, yeah, th there's not a perfect human being, and so you're going to have those flaws. I think that, you know, it's the same kind of thing. We, we can acknowledge that there is good there uh, and also acknowledge that there are real problems that need to be corrected. And it's interesting, too, that it's the very same people that you were talking about kind of at the beginning of this that have the very um, pessimistic view of Alabama, not just of our politics, but of our people and, and culturally. Uh, it's those same people that, uh, you know, take the stance that, at least from a political perspective, uh, you know, they'll come after a politician here and there, but by and large, you notice that they don't complain much about the policies that actually wind up getting passed. And that's because a lot of the stuff they want actually winds up getting passed. Yeah. Big, big unchecked government is bad on both sides. And mm -hmm. so whether you're in Chicago and it's a whole bunch of, or Baltimore and, and you have a whole bunch of Democrats that are um, unchecked, it's corruption because it's human nature is what we're up against. And, and, and you know, the, the powers of darkness or, you know, that that's sin. Like that's what we're ultimately up against. And so, you know, that doesn't mean that everyone, you know, every legislature and senator in, 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 in the state is a bad person. But what it does mean is when you have unchecked power, um, that's not good. It doesn't matter if they're Republicans or they're Democrats. And so absolutely not. We don't, I mean, we don't we don't have a Democrat Party holding the Republican Party accountable in the state of Alabama. We don't have a media holding. Not, well, we do now, but we, we didn't um, and haven't had a media outlet to hold them accountable. So they've been completely unchecked, doing whatever they want, putting out press releases, saying they're doing stuff over here and, and just. Yeah. Anyway, I could go on and on for hours. So. Well, we could, but you know, I, I do think we need to start bringing this blunt down. But I think what you're talking about is really at the core of the problem is we have to realize at a certain point that we are fighting not just a, a rival political ideology. We're fighting a completely different worldview. I mean, people that view the world differently because what, what you just talked about is the idea that even good people, people that you like, people that you uh, may have even voted for and wanted to be in office, they can't be trusted with unlimited power, no matter how much you like them. Yeah. And there's, you know, another group of people over on the left that seem to think that uh, it was bizarre to me, for example, that they thought that, you know, I'll just use this as one example, uh, that Trump was literally Adolf Hitler and hated, um, you know, everybody that wasn't a white heterosexual male. 
Um, and yet they were very upset when he didn't take more power and do more things when it came to COVID. It was bizarre, but I think it's because they really do see, and I think, frankly, they see it correctly, that any increase in centralized government power is a win for them yeah. because they can use it as a weapon next time when their guy's in office. And so it, it really is a different view of like, no, no, no it, it's not that I want my guy to be empowered to do anything bad to you. I just don't want anybody to have that level of yeah, power. Exactly. Um, and, and, you know, having that kind of power is exactly how corruption goes, which unfortunately the state of Alabama is no stranger to. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll have plenty of time to cover that in the future. So, <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and that is 1819 news. How can people get access to it? Yeah, no. And please do and help us get the word out because at the Absolutely. end of the day, there is a lot of powerful people that don't want to see this thing succeed. Um, you know, fortunately by the grace of God, um, we, we are, well staffed, well backed. Um, you know we have great resources, but it's still going to be an uphill battle. Uh, social media is no friend to truth, right? And so we we need just like how you opened your thing, like hey, social media overlords, right? So by um, the way, I heard you already got shadow banned. You've been on did, for like right ten away. seconds, and you got shadow banned. As much as I would like to say Zuckerberg is you know sitting in his castle thinking like ah, oh, there's a media outlet in Alabama, and I'm going to shut it down. <laughs> I think it's more of an internal thing uh, as far as it being a new website, and and so there was like a thing that popped up and said this isn't a trusted website yet. Because because it literally just launched, right? And so right. It's, I don't know what the process is, but, but whatever. But yeah, no, I mean, literally, so on my page, I can post uh, on my personal Facebook page, I can post a picture of a cat and I'll get 100 likes within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I posted um, uh, my first column with a picture of me in a suit announcing to all my friends on Facebook that I'm starting this media outlet or whatever. And it ended up with like eight likes. And I'm like, hmm. And so I took another picture, that exact same picture that was on the column, put it on there and wrote with no links, with no anything, and just said, hey, you know, I'm starting basically very similar text and then and, and then pressed it and ended up with over 100 likes. Right? No, I, I, I experience the same thing all the time. Facebook, YouTube's the worst about it, but yeah. Facebook, I, I did a segment a couple of years ago. Um, it was during my Christmas special. I was like, I, I did it live on air. I was like, let's see how long it takes me to find one of my videos. <laughs> you know, I was yeah. like, I typed in tactics, Caleb Cockwood news radio, 1440. And I was a uh, result number 89. Nice. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's the shadow crazy. banning is real. Yes. Yeah, no, it is. But to get back to how to find us. So you, um, the best way is to go to 1819news.com mm -hmm. and sign up for our daily newsletter. And so there's going to be a bunch of things when it comes up, like what's your address, what's your phone number. If you want to give us that, great. And, and if you put your address in there, we'll, we'll send you uh, the quarterly magazine that we send out uh, every three months. Um, but the only required fields uh, when you sign up are uh, name, email address, and then there's a little drop down menu that says pick the market that you're closest to. And so that way... We're not showing you, you know, a car dealership in Huntsville when you're in Mobile, right? And so mm -hmm. it just helps us uh, figure out how, you know, what to show who and, and and if there's, you know, more pertinent content to your market as we get more advanced, those type of things. So, sure, help out the advertisers. Yeah, and so it's um, it's it's your name, it's your email address, then what market you're closest to is the only information we need. So to, to, to us, that's the most primary way for us to make sure that we're going to be able to communicate with you as the social media overlords crack down on things. Um, right. But also Facebook. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, go there, follow it, like it, share it, comment, all that stuff. Um, and, and get the word out, tell everybody, you know, um, there, there's, there's a new sheriff in town. And are you guys also on parlor and rumble? Not yet. Um, and so it'll be parlor. It'll be rumble. It'll be gab. Is that right? Gab? Yeah. Gab's one of them. And, and I think they're Donald sort Trump's of like the more the... conservative Facebook. So yeah. Yeah. And so we're, um, you know, we're in the process of figuring out um you know best strategies for all that stuff um you know so we're on the the, the three primary uh and moving forward from there and so uh, but yeah so for right now uh facebook twitter and instagram uh, like us follow us share us comment uh, and help us out there and then go to 1819news.com and sign up for the newsletter all right sounds good and i'll definitely be consuming some of your content but you'll probably uh, have a few links that wind up in my sources underneath my videos as well so uh, definitely a resource I intend to use. And uh, real quick before we go, I want to say I know some of the people down at uh, API. 
uh, really good people. Some people that you've seen on the show, Matt Clark is one of them. Uh, he's been here several times. I know Matt Murphy, who I used to work with because he was uh, our Birmingham affiliate in Cumulus. And so, uh, you know, you guys seem to have a really good team. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with it. And best of luck. Thank you. To convince you to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'm about to do some political impersonations. First up, Bernie Sanders. It is immoral that in this country, the top 1% of YouTubers get all the likes and subscriptions. John Kerry. Please remember to ring the notification bell. President Joe Biden. If you like the show, call the TV guide and tell them. You know, the thing. Kamala Harris. Batman would want you to like and subscribe. <laughs>